All right, we've got a really big guest here today. We got Steven from Revenge, Steven Robinson. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you guys don't know about him, graphic designer for Revenge, also has a couple personal projects that he's been working on. So we're gonna go over all of those questions. Um, that being said, thank you for joining us. Yeah, no problem, thank you for having me out here. Of course, of course. All right, so first question. You said your passion for art and design began when you started making jewelry. You won the Vanguard Award back in 2017 for a 3D ring or sculpture you made, if I'm correct. I, I believe that was something you said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you explain what that award was for people that don't know? So, so, yeah, the Vanguard Award, I, I got that um, for jewelry. So in high school, I was doing jewelry and any, any art class I could do pretty much. And jewelry was the i didn't realize jewelry was going to be so like cool because i thought it was going to be like like beads and you know classic like stuff you just make at home but you actually working with metals soldering and all kinds of stuff and i i just fell in love with it and then um the vanguard award itself is awarded to a 2d artist in a high school and a 3D artist. So I was like actually competing with also the people, the kids who also did ceramics and all that. And I guess it's not really a competition really, but um, the Vanguard Award represents, you know, just exemplatory skill and originality and, you know, stuff like that. And it gave, it gave me a cash prize of like 1200 I think, to, to use on my jewelry to continue my jewelry work but that jewelry is expensive metal is expensive um yeah that's pretty much what it is it's just an acknowledgement of my good my good work yeah so like you touched on you know you took that money and used it to jumpstart your jewelry studio which obviously you ended up going a different route uh how far did you get into that and what kind of experience or lessons were you able to apply to what you're doing now with graphic design mm -hmm. Okay, so with the money they gave me, I actually just started at Dark Swan. And I bought screens, I bought the emulsion, the ink. Um, couldn't do it. I didn't know how to screen print. Um, I actually still have everything, but I ended up uh, paying for like printing for it. Um, so, I mean, it kind of kind of just taught me you know what I should be spending my money on and that was the first time I ever had money too because I was fresh out of high school I never had a thousand dollars so it was pretty crazy kind of lived off that thousand for that whole summer till I turned uh until I got a job at the grocery store yeah so kind of got your foot in the door then yeah all right um so moving into clothing the first brand that got you into streetwear was Bape. Yeah. You even you even had a Bape tumbler, right? Yeah, I still right. got it. All right, active on there? Hmm? Still active on there? No. no. <laughs> All right. uh, did the Lil Wayne Hustler uh, Hustler music Money on My Mind music video have any influence? I know he had that Bape jacket that got a lot of people into that. The Bape. Um, okay, so Lil Wayne, he didn't really put me on Bape with stuff like that. I knew he was wearing it. I knew every, like everybody was wearing it for real and stuff. But um, it was when I was really interested in it because I liked the way it was Japanese. It was a Japanese brand. You couldn't get it in America. Or at least I thought you couldn't because I was in high school. Um, but Keith Ape, he made that song, It Di Ma. And he was like rapping about Bape. He was wearing Bape. Everybody in that whole video was wearing Bape. And I just thought it was just cool. And then, yeah, it just kind of, I was finding deals and stuff, was doing trading for Bape stuff. Yeah, for sure. I remember that video. That was a big song. So after you got into Bape, did you start looking at what else was out there? Or when did you really start to kind of like branch out and start finding other brands too? So when I started to branch out into more fashion stuff, I was looking at Reddit, um, streetwear, r slash streetwear. And that was before it is now, where it was a lot more... Um, 
I don't know what the vibe is right now today. It's a little. It's way different than it was way yeah, back. Yeah, the now. vibe is like minimalistic. Like, yeah. Stuff like from like everybody's, the fifties look. Stuff like everybody's that. wearing Supreme on streetwear. They were wearing Supreme, babe, and whoever. It was like more like more of hype coming into like America, and like to the more general areas. And um, yeah, I just kind of just was fascinated by everybody, and everybody had like inspiration, you know, Imgur galleries. And I just took inspiration from other people's inspirations that I found out what I really liked. So not everybody will know, but you actually had a side job at a vape shop. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So, um, I always have all kinds of different jobs. So I was working at a grocery store first was my first, uh, job ever went to vape shop. I worked at target for a little bit. Um, that was actually two winters ago and then last winter I was working at Walmart and I only worked there for like a couple months just because I just wanted an extra thousand dollars that month for Christmas and stuff but I do that like every year I just get a little job and make a little extra money for a few months and then I dip I know I feel bad leaving them but (laughs) it's gotta happen yeah so Working those jobs, do you ever get, I, I know revenge isn't like on the level of like Supreme and stuff and you're a graphic designer, not necessarily like the head of the brand. Do you mm-hmm. ever get like people recognizing you or being like, oh, maybe you're wearing revenge. So they're like, oh dude, dope hoodie or something like that. Yeah. I mean, people will compliment like my hoodies and stuff, but they don't know who I am. Like, no, I've never been approached by like a fan like that, I guess, ever. Yeah, we're working on that. Maybe after the interview. Oh, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and then also, being a H three H three fan, you vape nash. Yes, vape nash. <laughs> I'm always vaping. Always gotta have my nicotine. So back to the graphic design stuff. Did you ever have any other career plans before the graphic design thing started popping off? Like doctor, lawyer, astronaut. Well, n- not really. Um, all throughout like high school, I guess growing up, I didn't really feel like I was going to do anything with my life. So, you know, I was actually, you know, I wanted to be a teacher because I wanted to teach jewelry, you know, after my jewelry teacher would eventually leave. I would think maybe like, maybe I'll be an art teacher after all this. Then, yeah, it's didn't change from the French. <laughs> All right, so right. I also saw that you said you're planning on going to JCCC for fashion design. Um, yeah. What do you hope to accomplish with those skills that you'll learn from that? Um, I just get my hands on materials and, you know, making those skills of like actually creating stuff and meeting new people. You know, my, one of my best friends actually is doing the, the fashion design there at JCCC and then she's been liking it like a lot and I... I wish I was there and I wish I could have applied sooner, but it's cool. I'll be there though. Yeah, for sure. And then with that experience, it'll kind of give you like the full circle. You've had the design one, then you'll have kind of like the process going on. Yeah. Too. Um, so you talked about JCC, like obviously that would extend your time here in the like KC Lawrence area, yeah. but do you ever have plans to leave this place, you know, go somewhere else, maybe California, where do you see yourself in the long, uh, the long run? As of right now, I'm not really looking forward to, you know, where I'm going to be in the future. I kind of, I kind of like to go with the flow a lot. So, um, it's either last minute sometimes, or I guess most of the time it's last minute of my decisions, but, um, I never really, I don't really have any intentions to leave Lawrence, uh, as of right now, I kind of want to chill here for a bit. And then, and then maybe branch out and see where I really want to live. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so moving forward, kind of getting into the revenge stuff. August 2017, Garrett, the owner of Revenge, for you know whoever's watching this and doesn't know, he goes on Instagram and says he needs a graphic designer. A couple days later, you get the job. Where what were those couple days like? What was the vetting process behind this kind of uh, messaging, DMing Garrett? Yeah, this is a it's actually being crazy story, but um, okay. So I guess to start out from the beginning, um, so I have my family's big, so I have 
At the time, I had three sisters and I have two brothers. And my mom was a single mother and we were homeless. And we were actually chilling at this house that we were house sitting, but we're actually living there because we couldn't find a place yet until, you know, my mom found a spot. Um, but yeah, I was literally, I was literally homeless and I had my, I had my computer and just a little cheap monitor and Garrett was like, and, uh, and then I saw Garrett post that thing on Instagram and I was like, I could, I could do something cause I know how to use Photoshop. I know how to do everything. I know how to, you know, work like that. And then I sent him. It was like, I saw the story, it was like 17 hours after he posted, I was like, dang, I'm gonna make it anyways. And then I sent it to him, I was like, hey, you guys still looking for a graphic designer and stuff? And then he was like, yo, this is hard. Um, can I have you do a couple more things and see if I wanna work with you long term? I was like, for sure, killed those things. He loved it and then he, yeah, and then he just added me on the team. Yeah, so of those designs, did like a lot of those get used or just kind of? Um, yeah, actually, a lot of them did get used. Some of them, of course, didn't. There's a, we have tons, tons and tons of gigabytes of Photoshop files, the JPEGs and stuff, PNGs and just of all of our stuff that we've created. But a lot of stuff we don't make until, until, you know, it's ready. Yeah, so... Another thing with like you and Garrett that people find interesting is that, you know, fast forward four years after you get hired and you still haven't actually like met him face to face. Yeah. Um, got anything to say about that, you know, plans to go to California um, sometime. You know, I want to, I want to, I, I don't I never really had the opportunity and never, I don't know. Yeah. Especially with COVID that was yeah. a lot of stuff on hold. I put it, I put a lot of pause on everything, but I guess. I don't know. I've never really been invited, I guess, out there. I've never really been, I don't know. But of course, one day I want to be there. I want to meet everybody, you know, just be cool with them, stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Part of the team, <laughs> part of the ship, part of the crew. Yeah. All right. So you said you're a bad drawer, but computer software saved you. Is that in reference to like all the adjustments that you can easily make compared to messing up a stroke, um, or having to erase over and over. Yeah. Um, I, I, lately I've been practicing my, a lot of drawing. I have, a, you know, drawing tablets and stuff, but yeah, the undo is just, why not, why not, you know, use the undo button? I know a lot of people don't really like, like traditional artists, they don't really like to use like on like the digital stuff. But I think now this day and age, we just, we just need to make it easier on ourselves. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I see the, like, I can understand the kind of theory behind it, why you wouldn't want to do the undo, you know, keep yeah. it as authentic as possible, but yeah, you have these tools at your disposal. So it makes sense to and what use we're them making, all. Yeah. What I'm making, it's going to be a final product that's going to be sold too as well so yeah so if you can have something to give you an edge make it the best version of itself why not use it yeah all right um so talking about working a little bit what's the biggest distraction that you have while working um it's mainly the fact that i have just the computer right next to i'm always at my computer so with my computer i have the whole world at my fingertips so it gets pretty distracting i have like three monitors i have one for discord one for my main monitor and then one for like secondary is just references, Google Chrome videos, stuff, stuff like that. And I sometimes get, you know, distracted by games, of course. And I guess the type of the job it is, it's just more, I could kind of do it um, whenever I want. I could do it in the middle of the night. I could do it at the beginning of the day. I could do it in the middle of the day. Um, but yeah, uh, a really big distraction is probably you know, falling down like a rabbit hole of like YouTube videos or playing a game for, I didn't realize I was playing it for like six hours.
yeah, definitely. That's working from home. I, I got like the same thing, but yeah, the, the YouTube rabbit hole, everything at your fingertips. Yeah. So what kind of music do you listen to when you work? What helps you get into your creative like mindset? So like, I don't have like a creative type of playlist or anything. I kind of have everything autoplay. Um, but recently, you know, my favorite rapper right now is uh, Drippin' So Pretty. He's, uh, he's, he's gone, he's got me through a lot of, you know, bad mental states and stuff. Um, listen to a lot of remixes, electronic music, Jersey mix, um, you know, Roblox core, glitch core, just uh, hyper pop. I've been listening to a lot of hyperpop, and it usually they they have some pretty upbeat stuff, so it always gets me pumped up. And I always have like, like a Red Bull, Bull and maybe a G Fuel. Fuel. And I'm I'm chilling. Yeah, that hyperpop, even like even the depressing hyperpop, will be like really upbeat. Yeah, like uh, I've been listening to Glaive lately. And he has I a love song. Glaive. I guess yeah. he's got a song about like self harm, but like watch the music video, he's smiling the whole time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, to expand on the creative mindset, are there times that you feel more creative than others? Like, um, maybe sometimes when you're at your lowest points, you can come up with like more creative things like emotionally drained, or maybe like early in the morning, you're like, damn, I got these creative juices flowing. Um, where well, I find a lot of inspiration is from kind of inside of my mind, really. It's just, it's very dark sometimes. It's, it gets very, you know, I'm. You know, I have depression, I have anxiety, I take medication for it every day. I've been taking medication for all that shit for, for years. Probably just a, a little bit before I started working on Revenge, I've been, that's when I started realizing, like, I need to start taking medication for, like, mental illnesses. And then, um, of course, I still have those ideas in my head, and I kind of just put that onto the screen, you know, I... I let my emotions come out all the time yeah and i think that's you know like personally i feel like that's when maybe the most like raw designs are coming out yeah, yeah some, some of the some, some of my best, best designs, designs i was probably crying, crying when i was making it to be honest like i was probably crying i was probably suicidal i was like this is gonna be the last thing i make and i'm gonna eat this whole bottle of pills and stuff like that so i mean that's just how it is so being a graphic designer for revenge how do things usually go? Are you creating a bunch of designs that you come up with? Is Garrett sending you a list of things he wants made? A little bit of both? What's that look like? So for Revenge, um, is Garrett's brand, first and foremost. And it's his ideas. He sends me a list and I, I do it. And But of course, you know, I always throw in like, hey, you should throw this in there. Or, and everything's going gonna, everything's gonna to have like my little... I guess little taste of you know my little charm, of course. Um, Even touch. Yeah, but it's it's mostly it's mostly all Garrett. Um, yeah, which I would like to I'd like to I know I have good ideas and stuff. I send it to him. He likes some of the ideas I have too, and it's more more fifty fifty because if he wants one thing a certain way. You know I'll make it. I'm probably make it even better than the way he envisioned it, or I'll make it. He would give me a vague idea and then I'll make it and then it's probably exactly what he wanted. So I guess that's more of like 50-50. It's like, well, I had the same idea as you, but you had the, you know, but he, you know, he's a genius. Yeah, for sure. The man calling the shots. Um, so through this, you know, through Revenge, you've had the chance to work on crazy collaborations. We got stuff like Ski Master, uh, Ski Master Slump God, Skrillex. Is there anything unique for these design processes that differ from the regular work that you do for Revenge? Like, were either of the artists in any parts of this design process? Did they have any say in anything? Um, not that I know of. I was just relayed messages um, from, you know, from Garrett. Because I think how it goes, it, or how, how it does go is just, you know, Garrett has the idea. And then I execute it. But I never speak, I've never spoken to Ski or, you know, Skrillex. As much as, much as bad as I wanted to, I, you know, like, 
it never really said anything to me. Yeah. So to continue talking about collaborations, is there anybody you would like the brand to collaborate with, be it through, um, or I guess, you know, be it through Revenge that you collaborate with, or maybe on a solo project that you get brought in for? Who would you choose? Like, what's that dream collab looking like? A dream collab? I mean, there's all kinds. I mean, through Revenge, I would like to see, you know, a Revenge Babe. You know, that'd be cool. You know, Revenge Babe or Chrome Hearts Revenge would be cool. Um, but for me, I feel like being part of or collaborating with people who like really like who I really look up to and stuff is like, um, I watch a lot of YouTubers, I watch a lot of streamers, um, I follow a lot of esports organizations, I you know, I'm into a lot of different things, these different uh, underground artists. I'd rather want to collab with other than like a big company like Supreme or Babe, something like that. So I'd like to collab with like people who I grew up with, like Gospel Boy Click, um, you know, some hyper pop kids. I just feel like that would, that would be really cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, so like we just mentioned, you've had a couple solo projects or brands that you've worked on. I think the first one was Dark Swan. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the vision that you had for that? Um, Dark Swan was mainly supposed to be being different. Um, you know, I made that. I made the graphic of the the swan with the two heads. I made that in high school, probably like 2016, and I've always like loved it, and um, I've always liked the idea of. I love swans. I love ships, wings, you know. Um, um, but the idea of like a swan, and there's the rare ones. They're black and they stand out a lot. And I always feel like I stood out from you know like my peers from high school. You know, I wasn't really. Um, I was never popular. I never had friends like that, and I never. You know, had a whole lot. I always felt like, I mean, of course, everybody knew who I was. Nobody hated me. I never had like bullies or anything. Um, but there was a lot of people that just didn't fuck with me or didn't care to even check up on me during high school. Like, um, and eventually in high school, I actually did go to, uh, you know, the the juvenile detention center. My first year senior, my first senior year or not senior year, but like senior semester. And then when I turned 18, they let me out. So I was back at the high school. But I've always just felt different with from everybody. And my family, they're Native American, they're Filipino, and they're brown. And I'm very pale. And if you looked at my family and compared it to me, I look, you know, I'm white passing. But... Um, and they're not, and I always wanted to be, you know, I always wanted to fit in with like the family photo. I never wanted to stay at, like, I've always stood out in family photos cause I was so like, you know, white, pale, I guess, um, being next to all these, you know, brown people. And I love, I love my family. I love, like, I want to be like them and stuff. And they, but yeah, always, it's just me being different. It's just kind of the whole idea of Dark Swan. Yeah, that's I've had some friends who kind of struggle with the same thing. Like maybe they're mixed and yeah, you know, straight from like an appearance level, they don't necessarily look like they fit in like directly with their family and they go through like similar identity struggles. So I guess like in, in high school as well, I was, you know, I was dressing a lot darker than a lot of other kids. You know, I was wearing more black. I was wearing more uh, like emo I was probably like a little emo kid in high school. Um, but yeah, I guess that's all I got to say. It's just, just me being different, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. And I mean, like once you get out of high school, it's like... It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Middle school, high school, it's a very... Sometimes like a, a hostile environment. Everybody's very... Um, 
kind of imprinted by their peers you know one person doesn't like something like one person doesn't like what you wear yeah like, the rest of the people are going to be like influence the mob Especially mentality growing up with social media too is also quite a big part because i've always wanted to feel like well like everybody well because like everybody's on social media everybody wants to like have like numbers and stuff since we grew up with that and i've always like wanted to like stand out and always wanted to like make myself a little more unique especially on social media because i love the internet and i love the whole culture behind it and how i could be myself yeah so to continue back to the question about dark swan you've now got cyber world um which i think is really interesting like what the idea behind it Basically, you plan on writing a series of futuristic dystopian novels that tie together with the clothing brand. Um, I know you haven't said too much else about it, but uh, what can you say about it? Or can you summarize what you've already said for anybody who might have missed those IG stories? So for Cyber World, I kind of wanted to make it a hub of like ideas. I wanted to make it literally a whole world of my ideas in my head. So I wanted to create a narrative like of this place you know this place called cyber world and within cyber world there's there will be dark swan there'll be my my one of my best friends he's he's in the storm he's like um he has his brand called familiars and um i've known him since elementary school and he you know i love him and he's he's cool and um i wanted to create these like different i wanted to take parts of like my life my family my friends, the place I grew up, you know, I wanted to bring all that together and kind of just rewrite a story using those. Kind of like, you know, I was, I'm very inspired by, you know, what I love to like, like, like Star Wars, I love Star Wars. And you know, those, a lot of Star Wars stories, they, uh, they reflect real life stories too. You know, real um, problems and stuff. Um, but I guess like creating a whole world like that is very, it's just very interesting to me. I've always loved dystopian stuff too. I like, I love the Maze Runner. I love the Hunger Games. Love, you know, Blade Runner and stuff like that. And it's, I just find it super cool. And I just want, I want my own. Yeah. So I know it's, you know, you got a novel series like planned. Yeah. The novel, um, I'm writing. Uh, it's something I do very personally, very privately is what I do. I, I write a lot. Um, I've always been, you know, during high school and stuff, creative writing was always very fun for me. I've always, like, enjoyed it. And my teachers did, too, and they always liked reading my stuff because I always had this weird, always had weird stuff. Like, I was, I was telling, like, I was rewriting, like, biblical stories, and I was... You know, just making them my own and, you know, take inspiration from, you know, the dark and Eve or the dark and light and stuff is something I really like to look at. Mm -hmm. Not in like a Star Wars type of way, but more of like a spiritual way, more of like a, you know, I feel like, um, you know, I, I wish, like, I'm not religious at all, but I do hope there's like, you know, I hope there's a heaven. I hope there's a hell. And whichever one I go to, then I'm cool with it. Yeah. And I think, you know, apart from that, like, even if you're not religious, you can take a lot of values and, uh, like lessons from uh, yeah, all, I'm all right. that stuff. The novel, the thing is it, it takes a lot to write just a novel. So I was, I'm experimenting with more of like more of a graphic novel and, you know, uploading those, um, pages and stuff to a website to the cyber world website and then having it as a, you know, just a story of like a graphic novel, like manga or something. Do you have any timeline for it? Like, obviously it's probably pretty rough at this point, like um, any dates that you do throw out, but. No dates really. I just kind of like, yeah, like I said, I go with the flow a lot. So um, when it's ready, it's ready. And when, it, you know, when it's not ready, I'm, I'm still working on it. I might not look at it for like a week, but I'll look at it for probably the week after I'll probably be working on it. Then I'll take a break from it and then come and then come back. It's like that. All right. So a collaboration with revenge and dark Swan or cyber world, like 
maybe it's not realistic. Um, maybe you want to keep it to yourself. You know, maybe, you know, obviously these projects are really personal. Is this something you would want to have eventually or something that yeah. would you, you'd allow to have? Like, of course, like I want, um, so like, yeah, like I said, cyber world would be like the hub of my life. You know, just everything just coming together. And I guess, you know, revenge could fit well because, you know, there's, I wanted to have different brands in cyber world. I wanted cyber world to have, to be its kind of its own thing, but also be like a parent of like little things I can also, so I'm not tied to just one set of like one, uh, brand name. You know, I like to work with like different, um, different words, stuff like that, stuff that, you know, don't, doesn't have like the recent one I made, like, I don't want to fly tank top, you know, that, um, that, that's like cyber world. I was, I was cyber world, but I didn't say cyber world cause I didn't want it to, but, but yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one thing, you know, like you go with a brand name. Maybe you kind of like pigeonhole yourself, but yeah, if you're doing like an overarching, overarching, um, community of things, you know, definitely yeah. makes sense to yeah, allow yourself more creative freedom. I want revenge. I want Garrett to hop on it and see what we can do. If, if it, if it pops off right now, it's, of course it's an infancy and stuff like that. So, um, once I'm on his level, then I'll, then I'll really try and get it. All right, so being one of the creators of Revenge Community, the subreddit, and the uh, RevCom Discord, which, you know, shameless plug, I got to throw it in here. Um, we do see you lurking. We saw you join up in the the uh, Discord, at least. And I think you've mentioned, like, seeing stuff on the subreddit. Um, but, which, you know, also both linked in the description down below, as well as all your stuff, um, Cyber World, like, whatever links, if you want to find out more about Steven, description down below. Um, but I've seen, yeah, like I've seen you lurking on there. Yeah. Is it hard seeing people react negatively to um, designs you, you know, put hours into? Like, how do you handle this? It was at the beginning because I'm, I'm very critical on myself to begin with. Um, and, you know, I never had really people come at me and tell me like, oh, this, this is garbage. This is trash because, you know, nobody, nobody ever gave me that type of like criticism. And it was very hard at, uh, to see like, like people like dogging on it and stuff. But and there's there's also kids out there to be like, I love this stuff. So I'm like, oh okay. And then, um, but I do I do lurk a lot. I mean, like I said, I'm always on my computer. I'm always seeing everything. I always have the Reddit's. I have you know TikTok. I have Discord. I'm in all kinds of Discord. I just find just like. What people are saying i probably won't i don't say anything bad because i don't want like anybody to like, be weird and like message me and stuff but uh yeah i do look at everything i do you know take everything into consideration i do find you know i do find inspiration from people saying like they should do something like this do something like that i was like okay maybe i'll i'll like whip something up real quick and then see if it looks good and yeah but yeah, it is, it's pretty weird. Cause I never, I never had that. I never had somebody tell me this shit is ass. Yeah. That's like, I can kind of relate to it because of YouTube, like I'll put out a video or something or, you know, now making designs, um, you'll get somebody who just like really hates it. And I've heard other people talk about it and like describe it really well, where it's like, you can get a hundred positive comments, but that one negative one is going to stick in your mind and like spoil everything. Yeah. So. I don't know, it's a lot easier if it's something constructive, which I review all the revenge drops and stuff. Everything I, you know, review, I try to throw like some constructive criticism on there if I do have um, something negative to say about it. But yeah, it's, it's really hard to just, you know, kind of take those just pure negative comments and yeah. put them in the back shelf. But I mean, I'm glad they're there though, because if that'd be be too safe without them yeah for sure they push you to you know try to make something that appeases to everybody which yeah. is impossible but you know the yeah. closer you are to that the better your stuff's getting all right so lastly i've got a bunch of fan questions from the revcom discord another plug 
I'm just going to read them off. You can quick fire a response. Um, also, feel free to say pass or, you know, if you want to skip one, that's totally fine. Uh, then we can jump to the next question. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. So first one we got, have you ever thought about releasing any graphic resources? Yes, I have. Um, I already have some. Uh, I have the, the PSP UMD disk mock-up thing on the Gumroad. Um, I do I do plan on doing more, like doing textures, brushes, um, mock-ups, blanks. Just a, a, I'll just call it like the Steezy pack, a graphic pack or something for free, obviously. Yeah, everything you need to get started. Um, next up, what are your favorite games? I, I know I've seen you on Clunker, like streaming that all the time. I think that's yeah. what it's called. Crunker. Crunker, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of a Crunker god. <laughs> Humble. <laughs> but, um, yeah, okay, so video games are actually like some of like my biggest inspirations. Um, so uh, my first video game ever was Ratchet and Clank on the PS2. Um my uncle gave me the demo disc to that game and he gave me his PS2 and I would play that all the time. Um Ratchet and Clank, uh Guitar Hero. I remember we getting Guitar Hero like when it first released and we saw it or I saw it at Best Buy the demo thing and I was like, what is this? And I was just playing it with my sister. And then I got it for Christmas. So I was just really asking for it. And then I was playing Guitar Hero all the way up till it ended. I've, I've been playing Guitar Hero since, and I'm, I'm pretty good at it. And then um, Jet Set Radio, when I got an Xbox, uh, you know, PS2 breaks, and, you know, find something else at the pawn shop. You got the Xbox, we got Jet Set Radio. I love that game. I love Jet Set Radio. I love the music and the characters, the whole art of it. Um, there's that. And then also like um, a lot of FPS games. I play a lot competitively. I play, you know, I play Warzone, of course, and I play Mario Warfare, Cold War. I always like the grind camos. And I was playing CSGO for a while. I kind of want to get into Valorant because my friends are. But I don't know because I'm kind of chilling on... Uh, Call of Duty for right now. Um, Roblox, I love Roblox. I've been playing Roblox since, you know, I had a little computer. I remember I had my, my dad's computer, his work computer, and I was playing Roblox on that. When I was like 12, and I still, uh, actually I lost that account. But then I made another account, I still have that one. Um, but yeah, I, I play a lot of games. Yeah, to go back to rock band or guitar hero i think you mentioned i think everybody who had that come out during their childhood that was like a big yeah. thing I, I remember me my brother and our neighbor we had rock band and we just like destroyed that in the basement <laughs> yeah i remember the when we got rock band when rock band came out that first christmas we got that the band set and i beat the whole game on drums that that the whole night i was up all night playing it all right so next question did you ever think revenge would become this popular? Yeah, I mean, of course. Every, I, to me, everything seems to go up, and nothing really goes down in value, especially with revenge and the the history it had, and it has actually. Um, so it's like it's no surprise to me that how big it is, and I'm very proud of Garrett and everybody there. You know, I, I. I'm just really proud of how successful it is and how much money and how happy they are and how happy they made me. And they, in a way, they, it kind of saved my life in a way because I was, like I said, I was homeless when he picked me up and that's when I started getting like more money. Um, I could start be able to buy things I wanted, do stuff with, you know, my family and stuff. And it's pretty fun and it's been great. And he, I, I own the, I owe Garrett the world pretty much. Yeah, definitely. That's, he didn't just like, lift himself up with the brand he brought all these other people up. He brought me up with them and it's been great. Um, so the next one, how do you feel about the change of everything? For example, the blanks? Um, I mean, I don't care too much about blanks. I mean, um, like another big implied thing in this is like the cropped hoodies since they haven't 
I think the crop hoodies are dope because nobody was doing the crop hoodies before. I mean, maybe they were, but I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't see nobody wearing crop hoodies until I got to revenge. And then when I got my first revenge hoodie, I was like, I was like, I really like the way it fits because like it doesn't, you know, stick stick to your waist. You know, it just drapes down. I've always liked the way it looked and new blanks. Of course, it's all it is is just an improvement. It's not a degrade or anything because. You can feel the quality between two different hoodies a year ago and today. And they obviously feel way better. They're thicker, they're more sturdy, stuff like that. Yeah, especially the price point, uh, price points stay the same too. Yeah, they, they also stay the same. It's crazy. So next one, will you ever want to meet Garrett one day? Which is kind of an uh, obvious yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah, of course I want to meet Garrett. I want to, yeah. I just want to thank him for everything. I want to see him and just be like, you're the man that changed my life, and I'm forever thankful for him. And I just want to be cool with him. Um, next one we got. What items or clothing pieces do you still want to make in the future? So I guess, like, longevity-wise, what designs do you want to see continue to, like, um, show up in the brand? And then, I suppose, like, silhouettes. Um okay uh of course we have like our arc logo and our lightning logo of course i don't want those ever to go away or change or anything i like like maybe we'll clean up the arc logo to make it a little more you know smoother a little sharper at some point just minor things but it's not it's literally not broken so no can't why fix it you know yeah exactly the formula is working but yeah, I do I do think we should branch off into like a little maybe a little subsection of like a more higher end thing where Gary can get down to um different materials, different, you know, types of clothing, you know. I kinda wanna see him and I want I kinda wanna see him like branch out and to see what he would make if he were like uh Rick Owens or something, you know, make some crazy stuff. And I wanna help him do that as well because I have my own inspirations and ideas for real fashion garments all right next question uh what is it that makes you capable and what are some characteristics you carry that represent what revenge believes in so i mean like as garrett said in his interview and stuff like that you know he wanted to get revenge on everybody who you know didn't really you know who talked down on him who like kind of bullied him and stuff and you know i was never bullied face on but i knew nobody wanted to fuck with me nobody really wanted to talk to me i was and it's not cap because i know i was sitting alone at that lunch and i was locking eyes with kids so it was like please come sit with me like please i want to talk to somebody and i was sitting there and it's been so many years it was like that and then i would you know i would get girlfriends and stuff and i would eventually start um you know hanging out with other people once I had girlfriends and stuff, but you know, they don't last too like too long and stuff. So um, but yeah, basically getting getting revenge on like everybody who probably looked past me, you know. You know, I there's been times where you know, there's a I've had an idea and I've told this kid, I'm not gonna say his name or anything, but I was like, you know, I wanna I wanna make a video game. He's like, You realize you need to go to school for that and you it's gonna like, I don't think you're going to be able to do it because it's really hard for you. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, that kind of hurt. But, um, but yes, people like that. And I know people won't say it to my face, but I know they're thinking it. So, and, but maybe they're not. But still, it still drives me to, you know, try and tell people that I am capable of doing, like, cool things, better things than any of y'all yeah all right next question what inspires your designs so what inspired my designs is usually what's around me you know like what's in my town what my friends do what my friends say the stuff we joke about the stuff we like my video games that i like and youtube videos and stuff like that right. what's your favorite part of designing a new logo um when it's done but how many hours what's what's like the average time put into everyone 
your designs if you had to you know ballpark i know it probably varies quite a bit um it does vary there's some days where i won't go back to graphic for a couple months and then we'll go back to it and we'll we'll retouch up on it um but uh I, i've been looking at the time and stuff and it takes like i don't i don't realize it but it does take like an hour to like three hours even to make the the grid of the when we post on instagram that takes like a couple hours because i have to resize everything and then i have to make it so it aligns perfectly in a square that takes forever and then and if logos it even takes even longer because you know you're always changing it yeah exactly a lot more detail than just yeah. a photo grid <laughs> yeah all right um how long have you been a graphic designer i mean we talked about when you started so it's been like what four years now yeah, I mean, I guess four years, like, quote-unquote, professionally. But I've always been into, like, Photoshop. We had a Photoshop class in middle school, and I was just messing around with that. And that really, you know, just showed me, like, the potential, like, of how creative you could be if within that program. And, uh, yeah, I've always, I was started off doing, like, photo edits for, like, my friends in middle school. I was... I turned like fruits into animals, stuff like that. Classic Photoshop tutorial stuff. That's kind of how I always started. And then before Revenge, I was working as a, like a little freelance artist, and I was doing cover arts. I was doing those cartoon um, flips of cartoon characters and making them wear like Gucci and Hypebeast stuff. Yeah, Hypebeast Bart stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I was making I was making Heartbeats. I made a Heartbeast Bart. <laughs> for this guy and then I made um I made a couple of those some of my biggest ones were probably uh one with ski mask and this other guy I think he bought a ski mask verse and then he had me do the art for it but I thought I was like oh is ski mask gonna see this I made ski mask Darwin from gumball uh gumball's world whatever it's called um and then I made the other guy gumball and it looked really cool. And I gave little Darwin do rag and stuff like that. I was doing like little little stupid stuff like that, and it gave me a little bit of money. Yeah. All right. So moving into pieces, what's your favorite piece? Revenge piece, piece you've designed. The burn them all hoodie. Just out of everything, or just out of your designs? Um, I guess my designs, the burn them all hoodie, and the foot vitamins. Um, or vet mall, I don't know, but yeah, we're not, we, it's fine. Um, we won't judge you. <laughs> that was, that was fun to make. Cause I was like, that was when I first started using blender was using, was when I made the, the vet mall's logo. Um, cause it was like iridescent. It was like Chrome it was very wild. And it was the first time I made something like super, like crazy cool. And Garrett likes it. We're still doing it. I'm, I have uh, have a project doing it using that graphic right now. I'm about to go home and finish it. And but yeah, the the, the fuck vehemence and burn them all hoodie probably my favorites. Yeah, good designs. Um, what was your first design that you made for Revenge? Um, in general, and then also that got released. In yeah, general, the, the first, first one, one it was a flip, flip of this metal band. But I made I made it look so convincing, like it was, it was like one to one. But I just made it say Revenge instead of the other band's name. Um, I did that, and then we did the baseball. He used my baseball graphic with the the diamonds on it, and it wasn't rhinestone at first, but yeah, it was pretty cool seeing that. He sent me that one for free too. I remember getting that in the mail. That was so crazy. All right, yeah, that's it for the fan submitted questions, and that's it for the questions that I had. Um, last thing I wanted to say, I know um, we talked a little bit about the negativity, and I wanted to say, you know, despite any negative responses that revenge ha uh, revenge fans have to your designs, um, just you know, know that you are the fan favorite. I'm in the subreddit and stuff, and you know, people do like you regardless of you know hating on some designs. Um, 
like we talked off camera a little bit. We talked about um, there was like a month where everybody was kind of riding for Garrett to send you stuff. So, you know, yeah, you've always been the, the fan favorite and you got to right. support the people always. Yeah, which yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Garrett, you know, I'm probably going to send you this video. But yeah, I didn't mean to like have anybody come at you like that. Yeah, being being in the community, it was it was on. But it's just, there's a lot of kids, and they always have a lot to say. So you just gotta be tolerant of it, and just you know, move move forward. Yeah, definitely. So that's all I've got for questions. Um, is there anything else that you want to get out there? Anything that you have to plug before we wrap it up? Um, not really. Not really to plug. Just follow my Instagram. You know. Uh, if you find something in here that you relate to, let me know, because I always like to talk to new people, always like to meet new people, you know. I don't really talk to, I don't have a whole lot of people who I talk to in real life, so everything I have is kind of online. Um, yeah, just follow my Instagram. Um, I'm going to get, I'm going to start tw uh, streaming on Twitch again. So I'll give you my Twitch and I'll um, and do that. Uh, shout out, you know, to my mom. You know, shout out Storm, Griff, Paris. You know, I love you guys. They've been here with me since the beginning. And shout out to Garrett for, for everything. You know, I owe my life to Garrett. And I wouldn't be here without him. And I don't think, I don't know. There's just so, much, so many emotions, but. Yeah, well, and we shout appreciate out to Garrett everybody. for, you know, giving you the job and bringing you here. We appreciate you coming here, talking to us. Um, yeah. Any closing remarks? Um, not really. Um, thank you for watching. Yeah. I'm going to wrap it up there. All right. Thanks again, man. Um, no that's it. You can cut it.